exactly it doesn't come so the quran is right and the muslims that say that the torah and the gospel are lost are wrong yeah 100 percent. i totally agree right your quran says something that's not true right and would you agree if the quran has errors in it it's not from god there's no errors in it well, let me show you one. No, no questions. Okay, right then. In that case, I've got a question for these two. How are you doing, guys? You all right? What's your name, bro? Elias. Elias and? Elman. Elman. Yeah. Nice to meet you. My name's Bob. So, you, you've seen me. I, I, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. I'm always nice. I have a question for you. In terms of, in terms of, um, what Muslims believe, who, who did, um, who did Jesus get sent to? To the Christians. To the Christians. Yeah. There were no Christians before Jesus. To the Jews. To the Jews. To the Jews. To the Jews. Right. And then, what did, what did Jesus bring to the Jews according to Islam? What do you mean in terms of... What, 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 what revelation did he bring to the, the Jesus Jews? Jesus died on the cross, right? We're, we're just having a conversation. Don't be rude. Is knowledge? Yeah. What did Jesus bring to the Jews? Yeah. He told them there's only one God. He told them that. He what revelation he did he bring? Uh, the Bible. He brought the Injil. The Injil. Yeah. Right, he brought the Injil. The Bible. That's what I said. Yeah. Well, the Bible is, is, is Torah, Zabur and Injil. Yeah. Okay? So we can't say Bible because we're talking about what Islam teaches, not what Christianity teaches. Okay, so if Jesus went to the Jews and he brought the Injil, what does the Quran call the followers of Jesus? The followers of Jesus? Yeah, what does the Quran call the followers of Jesus? Not sure. Calls the, um, the people of the gospel? People of the scriptures. He calls them Christians? Right, so if the Jewish followers of Jesus are called Christians and those Jews are meant to follow the Injil, why does the Quran tell Jews to follow the Torah if the Torah has been replaced by the Injil? The Quran says to the Jews, follow the Torah. Yes, after he sent Jesus to the Jews, after he gave Jesus the Injil. I'm not sure about that. Would you like me to show you? Yeah. Sure. It's totally fair. Now, would you agree? I'm not like, I'm not like uh, saying strong, but I just want to see Yeah, sure. Would you agree with me that if Allah sends the Quran, it makes no sense for Allah to tell the Jews to follow the Torah because he sent the Quran? I mean, logically, am I supposed to follow the Bible or am I supposed to follow the Quran? If you were like, what, what do you mean? As in, well, uh, from a Muslim perspective, yeah. am I supposed to follow the Torah or am I supposed to follow the Quran? The Quran. The Quran. Right. So now use that same logic. You think I should follow this book. So does it make sense that when Allah sends this book, he tells the Jews to follow the Injil, sorry, he tells the, 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 the Christians to follow the Injil and the Jews to follow the Torah. Does that make sense? Does it? Yeah. Doesn't, does it? Kind of. He said, so for the Jews, they have to follow the Torah. Yes. And the Christians follow the Injil. Correct. The Injil. So who should follow the Quran then? Muslims. Muslims. So that means, you're, if we're saying that, that means that I shouldn't follow the but Quran, they should, right? They should like, no, you should keep searching, it, find knowledge. Right, so should might, I follow... look like other books. Like... So should I follow the Quran or not? You should, you should right. Think, you should read it and see if it's so. So, so use your logic. I'm just asking you to think like reasonable human beings. You're not, you're not meant to follow. Just read it. Like find out. Like research. No, I'm just asking as a as a moral fact. Should I follow the Quran or should I follow the Torah or should I follow Christian, the Injil? I don't think you should follow. It, so, as a Christian, you you agree that I shouldn't follow the you Quran. See if it's convincing. Yeah. Okay. Let, let let me just show you the passage that I'm talking about. Okay. So in Surah 5:43. Right. In Surah 5, 43, it says this, okay? Right? This is Allah speaking to Muhammad, speaking to the that Jews. Is yeah, this is the Quran. It says this, but why do they come to thee, that's Muhammad, 
Why do they come to thee for a decision when they have their own law, which is the word Torah, before them? Yeah? Therein is the plain command of Allah, yet even after that they would turn away, for they are not really people of faith. Can I just read this? Yeah, of course. Okay. So the tr so so the, the the Quran is telling Jews to follow the Torah, and it's doing that in the seventh century. It's doing that. It's doing that in the seventh century. Now, if Allah is telling the Jews to follow the Torah in the seventh century. Is it logical and fair for me to conclude that the Torah is there in the seventh century to follow? The Torah, not the Bible. The Torah. Now, now let, let, let me show you another verse in the Quran. It says, yeah, in Surah 5, 47, it says, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. No, 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 says the people of the gospel. So which people are we talking about? Who's the people of the gospel? The Christians. The Christians. <laughs> and we're being told by Allah to judge by what's in the gospel. Right. So would you agree with me that if Allah is telling Christians to judge by the gospel, that that means the gospel is there in the seventh century to judge by? Because would it make sense for Allah to say to you, judge by the Quran if the Quran's not there. Do you agree that that's logical? I'm not too sure. So you're not sure that it's logical that, that Allah would say to you, judge by the Quran, so that means the Quran's got to be there. You think you're not sure whether that's logical? I don't get your point. That's the thing. Did you get my point? Yeah. Right. Let, 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 let's go over this very slowly. Yeah. If I ask you to judge by the Quran, yeah. is the assumption that there is a Quran to judge by? Can you judge by the Quran if the Quran doesn't exist? No. Right, so do you see the logic yet? Mm -hmm. Right, so does it make sense to ask people to judge by the gospel if the gospel isn't there? No, it doesn't. So if Allah says to judge by the gospel, that means the gospel's there, isn't it? Yeah. And when was Allah speaking here? He was speaking to Muhammad in what century? In what century? Seventh. seventh century. What is it? So that means the, the, the gospel is there in the seventh century. Mm -hmm. And when Allah says in the Quran, when he says judge by the Torah to the Jews, that means that the Torah is there in the seventh century, doesn't it? So would you agree with me that the Quran is saying that the Torah and the gospel are there in the seventh century? No. Brilliant. Now let me ask you this question. How many times have you heard Muslims say to one another that the gospel and the Torah has been lost? Never heard of You've never heard that. No. Never heard that at all. You've never heard a Christ you never heard a Muslim say that the Torah or the gospel has been lost. Like they've been corrupted though, like. So you have heard it. Yeah. You've heard that they've been corrupted. Yeah. Right. Well, like what you said lost. So let me ask you this question, who's right? Allah or the Muslims that told you that it got corrupted? Of course, of course Allah. But that means that the Muslims who told you that the Gospel and the Torah are lost, they're lying, aren't they? Against Allah. But it doesn't like <laughs> comply with the Quran. You what? It doesn't like comply with the Quran, you know? Exactly, it doesn't come. So the Quran is right, and the Muslims that say that the Torah and the Gospel are lost are wrong. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I totally agree. As a Muslim, you've got to agree with Allah against any other Muslim. So if a Muslim tells you the Torah and the Gospel are lost, but the Quran says the Torah and the Gospel are there, then you've got to agree no, with... You, those right. people know that they're lost. Right? right, so now we have to do a bit of historical research. Mm -hmm. Now, are you aware that we have codexes? Do you know what a codex is? Do you know what a codex or a manuscript is? Do you want me to give you a quick, a quick education? Yeah. So Codex or a manuscript is a historical document from centuries ago. Are you aware that we have decades of um, documents and manuscripts, in fact, hundreds of documents and manuscripts from the seventh century yeah. uh, that have the Injil and the Torah? Mm -hmm. And that we have them from the Middle East, the place where Muhammad was moving around and traveling 
and we have them from north Nibi north of what we call now Arabia. We've gotten them from north west Ni Arabia, right? So if we have documents from the seventh century that talk about the Torah and the Gospel, the Injil, and we have them from the seventh century in Assyriac, which is the language that you know um, Arabic emerged from. Then do you not see that? And, and we we have them in museums, we have them in libraries. That means that we have them today in the 21st century. Do you follow that logic? Yes. What's the like, documentaries about? What? Sorry. What's the documentaries about? Like, the... the documentaries. Yeah. Well, the, the, the documents. Yeah, the so these documents, you can go and see them in libraries. We have them in London. We have them. In, we have we have earlier ones in London. We have them in America. Just give me like a brief uh, explanation. Where is it? About? Right. So these documents, right? If I get out my Bible that's in my bag, and I go to these documents, what these documents teach from the seventh century is what my Bible from the 21st century teaches. So the Gospel of John in these seventh century documents looks like the Gospel of John today. The Gospel of Matthew, Mark and Luke look like the Gospels of, from the seventh century look like the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke today. And their theology is identical. Nothing changed. Not changed, not lost. So and here's, here's another thing that's going to blow your mind. We actually have documents of the Bible that predate the 7th century. Did you know that we've got Bibles in yes, London? We've got Bibles in London. You, you, come stop, and, stop, being a, stop being an irritable troll. Child, go away, child. Go away, you troll. Go away, you child. So, sorry about that. You just find some rude people here. So, if we, if we compare... You go to the British Museum today, the British Library, you can do this today. You can literally go from here to there today and go and look, go and look at the, the, um, the, the Bibles that are inside the British Library from the 4th century. They're, Those, they're in Greek. Huh? They're in Greek. No, I think that, yes, I think they're both in Greek, but one might be in Latin. Like let, to... let, let, me, let me finish. And go and compare those 4th century Bibles to the 7th century documents to the 21st century Bible and they're all the same. Matthew is Matthew in all of them. Luke is Luke in all of them. Mark is Mark in all of them. John is John in all of them. Which means that we have historical evidence from the 4th century, the 7th century and today as well as the witness of your God showing that the Gospel has not been lost not been lost did you hear that not been corrupted not been lost now you wanted to ask a question go on uh, you said the, the bible like in the fourth century in the museum yeah they're in greek yeah i think so yeah and now they're, they're like in english so you guys follow it in english no? yeah what's and wrong with that and how do you know if it's like translated correctly right brother if you go to have any you, have you seen like a greek can i i'm going to reply to that if you go to any of the dawa tables that are around this park, they're giving away English Qurans. Should they be giving away English Qurans? They come with translations. No, they, 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 you go and look at the Qurans that are given away by Muslims. They don't have the Arabic in, they just give away the translation. Should they be doing that? Sure right. My point is, if Muslims can give away translations, why can't Christians give away translations? I haven't answered my question. You just, you basically just answered me. Right. You, you so, answered me with a question. So, so what? I, I, so, maybe I missed your question. Tell you, say your question again. I said, I said uh, the Bible before they were, they were in Greek. Uh, yes. The the and, New Testament. Yes. How do you know if, if they're translated to English like uh, correctly? Okay. So, how do we know? Have you seen like a verse? Yeah. So let, like let's. Greek yeah. Let's let's let 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 let's look at that. How do we know? Because just as you've got Muslims who translate the Quran into different languages. So we've got Christians who translate the Bible into different languages and linguists, linguists, un, uh, here's the difference. Otherwise, I wouldn't understand if I go reading Quran, but I don't know Quran, but, I have to yeah, read but, 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 let, No, but let, let me answer his question because the, the thing is, when, when the Christian linguists translate the Bible, they work in committees and groups. So one academic is checking another academic's work. But you go and look at how Muslims translate their Quran. It's just one person translating the Quran into English. There's no peer review, there's no peer review, 
There's no academic checking academic. You know, Yusuf Ali does his translation. This Muslim does that translation. But we have memorized our books. We know if it's like correct or wrong. So let me ask you this question, right? Arabic is the language that you say Allah revealed his book in, right? Why, why should I bow down to the Arabs and say that the Arabs and their language and their culture is better than mine? Why can't, is your God not, is he not able to speak in English? He is able. He, he so if he can do anything and speak in any way, why can't he reveal his revelation in any way? He sends prophets for, for the purpose. And who's the prophet to the Anglo-Saxons, which are my people, my tribe? Who taught my people the Anglo-Saxons monotheism? There was, there was no prophet in Islam, there was no prophet of Islam that came to the English. We have, we have the same prophets, can you? No, no. Moses, the, Jesus, they came to you. Let me, let, let me show you a promise that's in your Quran, because you've got a problem here, right? Your Quran says something that's not true, right? And would you agree if the Quran has errors in it, it's not from God? There's no errors in it. Well, let me show you one. Let me show you one. I don't have that much knowledge. That is, don't worry, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not trying to catch you out, I'm just trying to ask you to think logically. I'm just trying to ask you to think logically. That's all I'm doing. Um, brother, brother, can one of you Google where Allah says he sends a prophet in his own people? Just let me see if I can find it. Bear with us one second. 1636, it says this. For we are assuredly sent amongst every people. Yeah. Now, you know that the Saxons have our own history, our own language and our own culture. Yeah. Very barbaric, very violent culture. Yeah. That's why we conquered the world, right? Yeah. But we are a people. Mm -hmm. Never sent a prophet to the Anglo-Saxons. We know our history. How do you know that? How do we know that? Because I, I know... I know amazes Muslims, but you're not the only yeah. students of history. We have our own history, guys. Yeah, so, you know, you know Arabs aren't the only ones that have a history. I know that's shocking, but it's true. So you're saying they haven't been, like... No no you know, you know, the people that were Christians, that Christianism to the English were Christians. People like St. Augustine, St. Cuthbert, um, you know, who were the Celtic saints? Not St. Patrick, he went. He actually went to Celtic. <laughs> Though ironically, St. Patrick is an Anglo-Saxon saint who... So, it was, it was Christian that taught the Anglo-Saxons monotheism. But your prophet says this, I'm holding your God to his promise. He says, for we... Assuring you, he's saying definitely this, With the command, serve Allah and eschew evil of the people who were come, Allah is guided. So if he's sending a prophet to the English, what language would that prophet speak? English. Brilliant. There you go. You can do logic. So the reality is that we know our history. Go and read Bede. Do you know who Bede is? He's a historian that tells the history of the English people. And, and what does he say? He says that the until church taught Christianity and then came to the worship of one God. JC, where's he gone? Where was the other verse? 14 what? 14.4, 14, let's Right? Now if your Quran says something that's wrong, right, would you agree that it's not from Allah? There's no mistake in the Quran. So why is it saying that Allah sent a prophet to the English? Look, says we send not a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people now let me ask you this question when when did english emerge as a language right we know the experts just yeah so english emerged after the first century mm -hmm. are you aware that languages are still evolving no right so there are new languages emerging, and those languages are the first cornerstone of creating a new people, right? But here Allah says, we sent not a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people. So, but then you're telling me that Muhammad is the final prophet and that we should accept an Arabic book. Well, the people, 
people before had their own prophets. So. so this is not referring to the English? It's just to everyone, in general. Right, but the English, English people have no Islamic prophet. They have, but maybe like... Where, 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 where's your evidence for this claim? I'm not sure. I'm not that expert, I told you. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. My point to you is, right, just just recap and resummarize what we've discussed, right? Your Allah testifies that my Torah and Injil was there in the seventh century. We have seventh century documents from the Middle East in 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 museums and libraries today that you can research yourself, you can go away and study them, and they teach what my Bible in the 21st century has, right? And you can compare those 7th century documents and those 21st century documents to the 4th century documents that you can find in the British Library today, yeah? We, the, in the British Library today, yeah? And you find that 4th century, 7th century, 21st century documents all line up. Which means that when your teachers say the Torah and the Injil have been lost, they're lying to you. And you have to decide what to believe in. But here's the final crunch. I've seen some verses that you said the fourth century, the Bible in the fourth century, and now they're they're the same. They're correct. They correct each other. So you've, you've, they correct each other I've in seen what some sense? Verses, yeah. I mean, like the the meaning, the translation is right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's it's accurate. I've seen some verses, but no, like full Bible. Yeah, yeah, you see, the thing is, I want to tell you that, you know, your Dayi and your, your teachers in the mosque, they're lying to you. They are literally lying to you, and you need to think for yourselves. You need to think for yourselves, you know? And so... Obviously, they have more knowledge than us, and we try to learn for them. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if a teacher is telling you lies, then maybe you shouldn't learn them. Right, so here's how you can know. What do you mean by lies? Yeah, like, as in, there's two kinds of lies. A lie that comes from ignorance and a lie that comes from deceit. Just name one lie. Right. So, so here's a lie. Here's a lie. Right? So Here's a lie. Here's a lie that Muslims teach you in the mosque that is not true. That we as Christians have lost our Bible. It's been corrupted and can't be trusted. That is a lie. We don't, that is a lie. We don't speak about other religions. And your, your scholars do all the time. The Dayi in this corner do all the, the time. Mosque. Yeah. The, the mosque just like, we talk about the teachings of the prophets. And yeah, stuff like yeah, that. yeah. So, so you, when, you know, when Muslims make this lie, they've got to prove it. And what do they go to when they try and prove it? They go to what's called textual variance. Now, I'm guessing you guys are students, right? Yeah. Right, if you wrote a 2,000 word essay, and I came along and I changed a couple of words, but the words that I changed didn't change the meaning. Would you agree that even so though... So it's changed. So let, yeah, but just do this thought experiment with me, right? If I change the essay, but none of the changes of the essay change the thesis of the essay, Does would you... Sense? You still changed it. No, 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 you're not thinking logically. Because remember, I know this shock guys, but you're not the only ones that have ever studied anything. What's if the someone the Quran changed, uh, is the Quran changed? Uh, uh, what, what, you see, can I, can I, can I, can I, you see, the thing is, bro, what you're doing right now is you're jumping on this word change yeah. and you're ignoring the point that I'm making. No, I get your point, but no, you... what is my point? Hmm? What is my point? You said you said that, uh, so if I write an essay, yeah, so if I write an essay, the meaning, uh, the meaning I'm writing, yeah. I don't, I get your point, but... What, so what's my point? Could you see it? Uh, there you go, you didn't I, I listen. Know, I do you know you, you No, you didn't that? listen, because what you heard is you heard the word change, yeah. and then you jumped to that word, ah, oh, that proves something. It's a different word, but they have the same So meaning. let me make so my point the, again. Okay. Let me make my point again. Let's say you write an essay, mm. right? And I come along and, and I change, your, your tutor comes along, and he corrects a couple of your words. Yeah. He changes your words. Because say you put the wrong there in, you, you used T-H-E-R-E -E rather than T-H-E-I-R, right? Has he changed the thesis or just changed the words? Just words. He's just changed the words. Yeah. Would you agree that the thesis remains unchanged? Yes, you know the word, you know the answers, yes. 
there's bro. So my point now that I've proven my point to you logically, that when Muslims talk why, about, why would it be changed? Why would it make sense? Uh, so so so, if you write T H E R E when you should write T H E I R, and I change your word, but I don't change what you mean. Your meaning has remained the same, but your words have been changed. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yes, you see, it wasn't hard, and you guys can do logic. Great. Now, uh, yeah, of course. Let me just let me just finish my point, and then you can jump in. So my point to you is is that the the New Testament definitely has had word changes. We Christians know that. We admit that. We talk about so that. Words changing, but, like, but the message has not been changed. The thesis of the Gospels has not been lost. And if you know what the thesis is, you know that the Gospel message is reliable. What do you mean by thesis? So the thesis is the argument, the argument that is being made. You know, and the argument of the Gospels is that Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. Your sister, you had a question. Look, these guys are wanting to pull I you agree, away. You've been, you've been, re you've been really lovely. I, just, I want to give you a gift, bro, before you go away. The, the, the thing is, Dai like this, they're frightened of us talking to Muslims, so they always try to pull Muslims away because they're scared. Because if I, man, he'll, he'll run away and you'll see that in a second. Because I'm going to go and debate. Um, so, um, you know when you said the word has been changed, but the pieces hasn't been changed. That's for you. That's for you. Okay. Yeah, of course.